Today, the United States Army Military District of Washington, represented by the soldiers of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, the Old Guard, and the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, pay a special tribute to Lieutenant General Kevin Vereen, Deputy Chief of Staff, G9, United States Army, 
who is retiring after 36 years of distinguished service to the United States Army and our nation. Participating in today's review, from left to right, is the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone. Formed in 1922 by then Army Chief of Staff, General John J. Pershing, the United States Army Band is the premier band of our senior service. Pershing Zone provides musical support for ceremonies and special events in our nation's capital and throughout the United States. The United States Army Band is under the direction of Major Aaron Morris and led by Drum Major Rob Moore. Elements of the Old Guard include Honor Guard Company, commanded by Captain Sean Conaway and led by First Sergeant Jonathan Benton. Next on line is Delta Company, commanded by Captain Fisher Watkins and led by First Sergeant Mitchell Martinez. Next on line is Bravo Company, commanded by Captain Frank Lazamis and led by First Sergeant Joshua Plant. Following is the Commander-in-Chief's Guard. Patterned after the unit created by General George Washington in 1776 to be his personal guard. The Commander in Chief's Guard is commanded by Captain Troy Schumann and led by First Sergeant Joshua Jenkins. The last element of their parent infantry unit, Red Coats instead of the Infantry Blue. The Corps is led today by Drum Major Aaron Morgan. Ladies and gentlemen, moving into position is the Commander of Troops for today's ceremony, Colonel Thomas J. Kilbride, Commander, 3rd United States Infantry Regiment, The Old Guard. Since the days of the American Revolution, the colors have been one of the most important elements of a military unit. Therefore, taking the center of our formation in just a moment, and bearing the national color, is the nation's foremost color team. The 3rd Infantry's Continental Color Guard, led by Sergeant Nicholas Cook. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors.
Please be seated. The history of the 3rd United States Infantry Regiment reflects the growth and development of our nation. 55 well-earned battle streamers, 2 valorous unit awards, 3 meritorious unit commendations, and 5 superior unit awards attest to the Old Guard's record of bravery in action and achievements during peacetime. In 1922, the War Department granted permission for the Old Guard to pass in review with bayonets fixed. The Old Guard will now fix bayonets to the traditional beat of the drum. Ladies and gentlemen, taking the reviewing stand is the reviewing official for today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Kevin Vereen, accompanied by the host, General Randy A. George, Chief of Staff of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as honors are rendered and remain standing for the invocation offered by Dr. Keith Vereen. Hold, wait, cut, cut, wait. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Vereen. Good morning. Let us pray. Lord God, you are good, and your mercy endures forever. You are with us through all the days of our lives, whether arduous or effortless, from everlasting to everlasting. We declare in this day that you are our God. O oh God, when we stand to consider a great and honorable career of service, we have confirmation in this day that you have been Kevin's help in ages past, and you will be his hope in the fulfilling years to come. Lord, as Lieutenant General Vereen and his family stand at a crossroad of transition, we are confident that even in times of change, you are still God. And Jeremiah 29 and 11 reminds us that we can have trust and assurance in the plan you have for our lives. I pray today for this dedicated and faithful soldier. I thank God for our parents in providing an impeccable example of sacrifice, fortitude, leadership, and humility, which have exemplified Kevin's career and his life. I pray for our entire family and our friends who have gathered here today. I pray for the continued success for all the great women and men who have benefited from Lieutenant General Vereen's honorable leadership. And as he retires from the Army, but not from serving, I am confident they are prepared to assume the watch from this day forward. We are grateful for the decades of sacrificial service which he willingly offered on behalf of our great nation. He and his family have given themselves for us. Now I pray that the years to come might continue to bring them satisfaction and enjoyment of relaxing days well spent. I pray for his wife, Monica, that she will patiently help him manage the new normal of retirement. Lord, abide still with Lieutenant General Vereen and bless him in every new season and every new endeavor. Lord, bless us all today with strength, protect us from harm, and preserve all that we hold dear, that we may continue to serve our community, our nation, our world, and our God together. In your holy and precious name, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
真。Oh God. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the advancing of the colors and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. Sir, first of the honor, the college of president.
please be seated. At this time, General George and Mrs. George are moving to the floor to honor today's retiree and spouse. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress July 9, 1918, has awarded the Distinguished Service Medal to Lieutenant General Kevin Vereen, United States Army, for exceptionally meritorious service in duties of great responsibility over a 36-year career, culminating as the Army Deputy Chief of Staff, G9, from October 2022 to September 2024. Lieutenant General Vereen has commanded from company to brigade level. As a general officer, his senior leadership positions included Commandant, United States Army Military Police School, United States Army Maneuver Support Center of Excellence, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, from August 2015 to July 2017. Deputy Commanding General, United States Army Recruiting Command, Fort Knox, Kentucky, from July 2017 to July 2019. Provost Marshal General, Commanding General, United States Army Criminal Investigation Command, Washington, D.C., from June 2019 to July 2020. And Commanding General, United States Army Recruiting Command, Fort Knox, Kentucky, from July 2020 to September 2022. As the Army Deputy Chief of Staff, G9, Lieutenant General Vereen provided steadfast leadership across a broad array of programs, including management of facilities and infrastructure, environmental programs, housing, installation logistics, public and private partnerships, energy and water security, and soldier and family morale, welfare and recreation, all geared towards improving readiness and resilience of the total army. Lieutenant General Vereen's selfless service and inspired leadership are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service. His significant contributions during times of peace and war have been historic and reflect distinct credit upon himself, the United States Army, and the nation. Signed, Christine Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. Headquarters Department of the Army Special Orders. By order of the Secretary of the Army, the following General Officer is retired. Lieutenant General Kevin Vereen. General George is now presenting the United States flag to Lieutenant General Vereen for his faithful service to his country. The Superior Public Service Medal is being awarded to Mrs. Monica Vereen for exceptionally distinguished volunteer service to the office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, G9, 
from August 2017 through September 2024. Mrs. Vereen was an inspiring, compassionate, and tireless volunteer who was ex whose exceptional efforts improved the morale, esprit de corps, and well-being of every organization, unit, and community she served. Her selfless contributions of time, talent, and energy positively enhanced a myriad of key programs and initiatives. Mrs. Vereen's distinctive accomplishments across seven years of distinguished volunteer service are a great credit to her, the Office of the Deputy Chief of Staff, G9, and the United States Army. Signed, Christine Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. On the occasion of retirement of this distinguished soldier, we also recognize the outstanding service of Mrs. Monica Vereen, who is being presented with the Department of the Army Certificate of Appreciation for her faithful and devoted service. It is dedicated support which made possible such a lasting contribution to our nation. Signed, General Randy A. George, Chief of Staff of the Army. In lieu of flowers, Lieutenant General Vereen and Mrs. Vereen have made monetary donations to the National Cancer Society and the Lupus Foundation of America. We are proud to recognize Lieutenant General Vereen and Mrs. Vereen's devotion to our country, and we wish them happiness and prosperity in their well-earned retirement. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the posting of the colors. Please be seated.
ladies and gentlemen, General George. Good morning, everyone. How's everybody doing? Feels pretty good in here. I know it's supposed to be 100 degrees today. Um, Hey, first, I want to get uh, everybody who works in G9, IE&E, &E, and, and MNRA to please stand up. So I was, I was thinking about this, and I was just talking to General Vereen before. First, I want to know who, who the heck's at work, what, what's getting done. <laughs> Um, but I was, uh, I was just thinking about uh, everything that's in that arena that touches our soldiers and families and their lives and the things that they're doing. And I just want to, I want to thank you. And that's, uh, we were just talking about that this morning. Um, of course, after reading an article. And and I, you know, our work is never done uh, with our teammates. I did, for the record, I did, uh, I did talk to General Vereen this morning. I'm like, hey, just you're not retired yet. We haven't handed you that certificate. So we started talking about that. Um, great to see everybody here this morning. And I want to I wanna thank uh, um, Secretary Jacobson, um, Dr. Schaefer, the DAS is here, our Chief Warrant Officer of the Army, Steve um, Austin from um, OCAR, and um, General Vi, where, where's General Vi and Linda? Always great to see you. Thank, thank you for, for being here. Um, and we're, it's hard, as I was telling Kevin, to, to fit in one hour. You know, we're trying to talk about 36 years of really, really exceptional service um, to our nation. But uh, Kevin, I'm honored to help celebrate this. Um, and you've been an incredible leader for our Army. And you've had some super tough GO assignments these past couple of years. And I know I was thinking about Gardner Conference Room. I know that's one thing you probably want to forget. Um, we've had many tough back and forth discussions in Gardner Conference Room about the kinds of things that we were just, that we were talking about right now. And I've always been impressed with your positive outlook, your genuine concern for our troopers um, and their families. And then um, really things that, when it's really tough, one of the things that gets really hard um, is just how much of a team player that you are um, caring about everybody else. So I just wanna, I wanna thank you. Um, and I, we all know that we've been, when any of us who've been doing this for a while, that this is a, a team sport. And Kevin's got a bunch of family and friends here today um, that I know help shape and support him through the years. And I want to say um, thanks to some of them first. So Kevin was a military kid raised by great Army parents. And then I think a person's life, according to you, the rock of the Vereen family, um, and help you keep has helped keep you grounded and true to your faith, to your family, and to your friends. Um, and I know Monica, you work over at the Department of Labor, and I I hear that Kevin doesn't have any plans. We were just talking about this, but I just want to make sure that he doesn't hit your unemployment numbers tomorrow. <laughs> Put it bad for the. But I want to. I want to thank you for all that you've done to support your soldier, all the things that you've done to support our families um, through the years. And I hope this retirement brings a little more downtime for you both um, to travel and spend time. I know you got one big trip on there, which the kids should be brimming about after hearing that this morning. Um, but I want to thank you that all you've done for the Army and the G9 team. Kevin has two. Kevin has two brothers, John and Keith, um, who are here. Their father was a Special Forces NCO, and their mother, the heartbeat of their family. And I know the Vereen boy, boys learned from their parents to persevere and to keep in mind that no matter how hard or tough things might be, 
there is always someone somewhere having tougher times than you. And it seemed like your mom and dad had a good subliminal army calling in that philosophy. Since all three Vereen boys are now retired from the army, and by my count, that gives your parents a 100% recruiting record, which is pretty damn good. Kevin's four children um, are also in the audience, um, really wonderful adults. And his eldest son, Kevin, traveled here from Colorado Springs, a place that I know well. We were talking about that previously. Kevin previously served in the Army, is now part of a startup business. Um, and I don't know if you're here with uh, Lex. Your granddaughter. Kylan, is, she's here as well, but I want to welcome you all the way out um, from, from Colorado, from up from Atlanta. Um, Kendall works for Delta Airlines, so I assume Kendall had an easy trip up here. <laughs> um, Sherelle, Kevin's only daughter, is joining us also from Atlanta, and her and her husband own their own business, and I think here with their son, Gregory. Gregory, where are you at? You out there? All right. Make sure Grandpa takes you out for dinner tonight or something. And finally, uh, Kevin's youngest son, Kirkland, who is uh, serving in the Army as a field artillery officer with the 82nd Airborne Division and came here from Fort Liberty, um, also a place I know well I like almost as much as I like Colorado. Um, but where, where are you at there, Airborne? Why don't you stand up and let everybody see you there? So thank you. All right, not in attendance today, but we want to recognize uh, Mother um, Lee Vereen, mother-in-law Norma Campbell, father-in-law Daniel Smokes, sister-in-law Yolanda and Darlene, and then grandson Cannon. Um, I know Kevin is extremely proud of each and every one of you, and I know he never misses an opportunity um, to show it. And I know there's a team of other important friends and high school classmates um, who have been with Kevin along the way. Um, interestingly, Kevin never shared that until just right before this, or we would have had some better stories. I got a couple of good ones, but we would have had some better stories. But I want to thank everybody um, for being here. So we're going to talk a little bit about that Army career um, that, uh, that Kevin has had. And Kevin is kind of a jack of all trades, and that's exactly what we would expect, especially when you get to become a general officer, and you've had the kind of assignments that uh, Kevin has had, but he's had a unique career and served in a variety of teams. He started as a field artillery officer in 1988, so I want to look over at Kirkland and, and tell you, you know, that you've got about 33 years ahead of you right now. Um, after graduating from Campbell University in 1991, Korea took his first military police assignment at Fort Belvoir, where he served as a security platoon leader and later the operations officer for the U.S. Army Intelligence and Security Command. Two years later, he attended the MP Officer Advanced Course as a captain. And Kevin, I'm not calling you old, but when was the last time the military police school was in Fort McClellan, Alabama? <laughs> Been a couple of days ago. Uh, in addition to Kevin's time as a junior military police officer, he also found a way to attend the Civil Affairs course at the JFK Special Warfare Center. And as a captain, he served as a detachment commander for Alpha Company, 9th PSYOP Battalion, and then commanded Charlie Company in that same unit. Kevin went back to the MPs when he took an assignment in Korea, and Korea had its perks. Kevin's Brother John remembers how excited Kevin was to find a good price on a pair of Air Jordan basketball shoes. I am told Kevin is an even better basketball player than he is a golfer, and I'll talk about that in a few minutes. And as John remembers it, when Kevin was going up for a dunk, those Air Jordans fell apart. So I guess you get, you get what you pay for. In 2008, Kevin deployed to Iraq as the Deputy Brigade Commander of the 42nd MP Brigade. And after commanding the 14th Military Police Brigade, he became the 48th Commandant of our Mil Army Military Police School 
but at this point at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, not Alabama. Kevin's final job with the MP Corps was being the Provost Marshal General of the U.S. Army and the Commanding General of U.S. Army Criminal Investigation Command, but he wasn't done helping the Army team. In 2020, in the middle of COVID, Kevin became the Commanding General of Recruiting Command, an unprecedented time really for our whole Army and for our nation, but perhaps most especially for our recruiters whose job it is to go into schools, go into homes and spend time Even a global pandemic couldn't stop Kevin's parallel career. For the past two years, he worked with all of us here, being commissioned. Um, that seems like a couple of days ago, but I remember that was a big, big job. And then seamlessly integrated the Army Resiliency Directorate into the G9. Once the pandemic was over, Kevin also reinstated the G9 golf tournament. <laughs> this was a tight competition, and Kevin's team found themselves in position for a 25-foot eagle putt for the win. Kevin hadn't made a putt all day, <laughs> but Ivan Bolden asked, Ivan, are you here? Is Ivan in here? All right, good. So we got the, I got an eyewitness account down here. But Ivan Bolden asked if he wanted to take it, and Kevin jumped at the chance for redemption. Kevin began his pre-putt pre routine, walking all around the hole, checking the wind, and getting down on his hands and knees to inspect the grass. And what after what Ivan Bolden said must have been 10 minutes of preparation, Kevin missed the hole by four feet. <laughs> Bolden then strolled up to that same position, dropped his ball, and sunk the putt. So the moral of the story here, Kevin, is next time let Ivan take the putt. <laughs> All right, now I know you're going you're gonna to get the last one. I told Kevin about this. I said, I got a story. You're going to get the podium second. Um, actually, this is atypical from everything that I've heard, um, that uh, actually Kevin is quite the gifted um, golfer. And I know Colonel um, retired Kevin Moffat um, said he is excited um, for your retirement because he might finally get to win some of your money on the golf course. Through all of his numerous Army experiences and many challenges, Kevin has maintained his faith, his family, and That that's a real, real achievement. And Kevin, you represent the very best of our military. Peace Corps, with three things, um, I would start by saying um, you are a team player. You understand what Army life is through and through and have committed to making every community and every organization you are part of a better place to work and to live. Second is you lean into every challenge. And I know I've really appreciated this, and no matter what the topic or issue, you approached it with care, professionalism, and a steady hand that always got the job done. And finally, and I think this is something that's important, and I talk about this every time I go out to, to Leavenworth and go to our GO courses, um, you are a lifelong learner. From field artillery to psyops, and as a military police officer, you have taken on the toughest challenges and done so with an open mind to make yourself and those around you better. Monica and Kevin, congratulations uh, to both of you. I know there are a lot of adventures ahead in retirement. And while I know it's bittersweet to hang up the uniform after so long, you both deserve this break. And whenever you feel like you need a good toast of Army, I'm sure there's a spare bedroom for you down there at Fort Liberty. Could probably even get you a barracks room, Kevin, if you want one. Um, and Kevin, you're always welcome to join us for the beloved our staff huddle up here. But I want to thank you um, for, from the bottom of our hearts uh, for everything that you've done. Um, again, it's really hard to recount in just a couple of minutes. Um, all that you've given, all that you've sacrificed, um, you and your family through all these years. 
um, but we're, we'll be forever grateful. So thank you. Stay in touch. This will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Vereen. Okay. All right. I think I've accomplished the first thing. My uh, my speech is here, so that's one. I know uh, Colonel Griffiths probably uh, she's good. She's relieved, so it's great. She doesn't have to run back to the Pentagon and print it off and run it back over here. So I think we're good. Um, so first, uh, I, I do want to say it's uh, it's an honor to be here, and uh, just I'm excited, bittersweet, but uh, but again honored to be here today. Um, it's a blessing to stand here after 36 years. Um, and I, I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, for without him, none of this would be possible, but with him, all things are possible. Um, I, I, I want to just add my family uh, and I are so grateful for uh, that all of you have made your way here today to honor me and honor them, and, uh, and I want to say thank you uh, to all the participants today in the ceremony, the soldiers of the old guard, uh, from the Military District of Washington and the Army Band, I do want to thank uh, you for making this day one that my family and I will never, ever forget. You represent the hundreds of thousands of soldiers from all across the Army, and I am so proud to serve with you. To the protocol team, I thank you for the many hours of planning, preparation, and coordination to help ensure this ceremony would be executed without a hitch. General George and Patty, I want to thank you um, for your presence today and officiating the ceremony. Uh, it's an honor. I know how busy you and your family are, and, and I tru truly appreciate you officiating this special event. To all the general officers, the senior executive service leaders, secretariats, and our sergeants major, thank you all for attending today. To my teammates on the Army staff and my battle buddies, Honorable Jacobson and Schaefer, I want to thank you all for your friendship. I, I, it has been wonderful serving with you during my time as the G9. You all have been amazing teammates, and I would cherish our time together serving our soldiers and our families. To my wife, Monica, uh, the love of my life. Uh, there's bets that I won't cry, and so I hope to win the bet. Um, front office has already got some, some tabs going, but um, I, I always say absolutely one of the smartest, focused, visionary persons. I'm lucky to have you by my side. Uh, thank you for juggling your career um, and your profession, making sacrifices, and being with me on this. Even if you're not saying it out loud, I know you're saying it, you're thinking about it, so uh, we can get that out of the way. To my children, Sherelle, Kevin, Kirkland, and Kendall, four extremely talented, resilient, terrific young adults. You all are charting your course in life and having graduated from college, it is an honor for me to be your dad. I thank you for your support and your love. My goal in life was to be your dad and a father who was always there to help you launch into adulthood. But I have one task remaining. Kirkland, I need you off my cell phone plan. <laughs> but seriously, Seriously, know that I'm very proud of each and every one of you. <laughs> to my mother, who's not here today, she's back in North Carolina. Mom, I love you, and I'll see you soon. She wanted to be here, but she just couldn't make it. It's too far for her to travel. To my brothers, John and Keith, both Army veterans, I want to thank you for supporting me and urging me to continue to serve while many times you were taking care of our mother. Our older brother, John, literally fell into the void left by my dad, who passed away in 2003 being the patriarch of our family. And to their wives, our, my sister-in-laws, Linda and Yolanda, you are instrumental um, in this family village, and I thank you. My twin brother, uh, Dr. Vereen, um, Keith, um, I thank you for the prayer. When I asked, you didn't hesitate. It's amazing how time flies. Um, I used to get contested, but now he's humble and he has humility and he, <laughs> he listens to me, so that's good, because uh, he's the older of the twin. Uh, and for those who know me, I love my brothers uh, tremendously. We will always be close, we've always been close, and we will remain that way.
to my grandchildren. The oldest, Cannon, is not here today. He's got sports uh, and school just started, but I do have Gregory and Colin here. Uh, and uh, I love my grandchildren, and I do look forward to time to see them and see Ms. Norma Campbell, who couldn't make it here today. Uh, I want to thank her for supporting me. Uh, but here today, standing in the gap, is her brother, Danny Rush, and wife, Selena. Um, Danny is also a veteran. Uh, I also want to thank my sister-in-law, Tanya Coachman, who is here today. To my father-in-law, uh, Dan Smokes, uh, who is not here today, but essentially became my father in every sense of the word when my dad passed away. To my cousins, some are here today and traveled in and all from around the, uh, the United States. Um, thank you for being here. Your presence here means so much to us. Representing our family on my mother's side are Cheryl Wallace and, and Dina Emanuel. Um, and from my father's side, Sean Frank. Um, I also have in attendance uh, here some high school and college classmates. There are a lot of them um, that are here today, so I want to thank them. My fraternity brothers, um, the members of the Divine Nine, what a wonderful organization that does so much for our community, and former comrades in arms, soldiers and leaders who have, um, I've been blessed to serve with during my time in uniform. There are many special friends from across all states uh, across the U.S., Virginia, North Carolina, Minnesota, Maryland, Alabama, South Carolina, Pennsylvania, Texas, Georgia, Louisiana, Kentucky, Missouri, and others. MP comrades, leaders, community leaders, civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, Mr. Ken Wong, I think is here, uh, and so many more. And, and the Army has taken my family and expanded it into literally hundreds. And for that, Monica and I are eternally grateful. Each one of you are part of our village and have been there for us in so many ways, and we want to thank you. Okay, for those who don't know my story, I would just say it's been a journey, a journey of unexpected twists and turns on the road of life, life-changing in many cases. But let me say, in all things, we are thankful. Monica, my children, my family, we are thankful. Yes. I lost a spouse, a father, a, fa a father-in-law, a mother-in-law, and a cousin killed in Afghanistan when her convoy came under attack. But through life's heartbreaking events, I hold to what has kept me and given me solace, and that was staying on the Army team. From hum humble beginnings from the great state of North Carolina, born into an Army family, watching my dad in Army Green Beret, returned from stints in Vietnam and finished his career at Fort Liberty, a man who provided so much for his family throughout, and a mother who also worked but managed to raise three boys on many occasions by herself because my dad was busy doing what he volunteered to do, to serve his country as a soldier. You see, my dad was not drafted. He willingly volunteered to serve. For him, it was an opportunity, an opportunity that took him from the farms of North Carolina to places around the world. It was also uh, allowed us the experience of growing up in and around the Army, and it opened up a world for me and my brothers that we possibly would have never experienced as young children and teenagers. So Monica and I are a true Army family and both fortunate to have ties to Fayetteville and Fort Liberty, our home. So why the Army? I'm glad you, I'm glad you asked. The Army was not my first choice. You see, I wanted to play in the NBA. And like a lot of us, my brothers, my friends, and I spent afternoons and all weekend studying and playing both organized and unorganized sports. Yep, recreation teams, that was organized. But then, more times than not, it was good old backyard basketball and football. And when I decided to join the Army, my initial plan was only to do four years with a goal of leveraging the experience and seeking another career. But it was the camaraderie, the friendships, and that competitive spirit that, created by, that the Army created that gave me the inspiration to continue. And if you know me, you know that I am competitive and I like to win, which is another reason why my two favorite teams are the North Carolina Tar Heels and the Washington Commanders. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, 
Uh, friends, my Army career has been no different from any other. military you know the life we live and others do we go where the army sends us ladies and gentlemen all of us who have served like like everyone i did not get here on my own it was with the help of fellow officers non-commissioned officers they contribute immeasurably to my success and there is a reason why we say in the army every soldier to include officers has a sergeant so to all my sergeants thank you for your wise counsel and your instruction our Army is the best Army in the world because of our non-commissioned officers, the backbone of our Army. And a thank you goes out to my senior enlisted advisors during my nominative assignments, Sergeant Major Retired Rich Woodring, Sergeant Major Larry Orvis, Command Sergeant Major John Wayne Foley. That's an awesome name, and that's his real name. And Dr. Eller Foley, I can't forget about her because she's really the Sergeant Major of the family. And Sergeant Major Mike Perry, what a tremendous team of professionals, stand-up barriers, who exemplify the creed of the non-commissioned officer. I was blessed to serve with the best officers and learn from them and take away nuggets of information that charted the course for me. A special thanks goes out to Major General Retired Kent Savory and his spouse, Mary Beth, my first boss as a newly promoted general officer. He showed me the example, never let being a general officer define your relationships with others. People need to be able to see you are human, you're genuine, you live, you have fun, you're somewhat, at, you're somewhat athletic, and that you respect them. So I want to thank the Savory, Team Savory and Tori for welcoming Monica and me to your command. General Savory, I know where you're sitting because I saw you. Where are you? I want to apologize now. I can apologize first. Our first encounter when I said, sir, I'm glad to be here. I think I'm getting promoted next week and the new Chief of Staff of the Army, General Milley, is flying in to promote me here at Fort Leonard Wood. And sir, I think he wants not going to be here. He's just going to promote me and leave. Now, anyone that knows General Milley knows he's not just flying in to remote and leave. He's going to look around and ask a bunch of questions. Uh, Lieutenant General Retired Leslie Smith and Venedra, thank you for your friendship over many years. You have been true friends, and uh, we want to thank you, Team Smith. And to Generals Vi and Linda, Steph Twitty, Hawthorne Proctor, Tom James, Barry Price, and the list goes on, all instrumental in this journey. Your counsel and support of the years were truly, truly valued. To my G9 front office, Mr. Mr. Klimstein, Colonel Parker, Lieutenant Colonel Griffith, and Marie, and all of the headquarters, Department of Army G9 team, I have enjoyed this ride with each and every one of you, dedicated professionals who take pride in delivering excellence. So as I close this great ride of 36 years, I am thankful for the opportunity to serve this nation. I will always be a soldier for life, and I will advocate for those still serving. And like many of you who are here today, the days of wearing a uniform did not stop. The passion you have and the desire to ensure that our Army continues to be the model that so many nations look to around the world. I will do the same. I will do the same as a soldier for life. Monica and I will miss our time in uniform, but we know our calling exists at the next phase of our lives. If asked what I would want my legacy to be, it would be this, that I cared and I represented hope to those aspiring to be all that they can be in the Army. May God bless, bless each and every one of you. May God bless America. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, the Army Song. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain in place until the departure of the official party. You are welcome to join Lieutenant General Vereen and his family for a receiving line and reception in the Quran room at Patton Hall. Thank you for attending today's ceremony and enjoy the rest of your day.